one. Hello and welcome to the Women's Cave. It feels weird, right? Because I don't have to like fight Wilnona for the getting. So I'm just, what a, this is Jade, by the way. So it's just me. Well, maybe Wilnona will be joining me later because life happens. And yeah, that's how I'm going to describe that. <laughs> we just have like a bunch of stuff going on. And I, I know y'all, y'all to follow us know that we just constantly do crazy things. So here are like the top four books that people love from us though. We write literary life guides with pop poetry. And I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy. Both of them available on Audible. Um, and I thought I did my journey alone. One of our all poetry books. And then the other of our all poetry books, If Only I Were Me, I'm available on bondsandnoble.com and amazon.com. And you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andrewthought.com. Oh, I forgot to add, well, Nona will kill me when she listens to this later. We are the co-founders of the 25 Hottest Indie Authors, Artists, and Advocate magazine. So yes, you can check out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. Okay, so you're not here to hear about me. I mean, seriously, I'm the boring one of the group. You're, you're here to hear from my wonderful guest. Wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I am Megan Mesmer. Uh, I am a wonderful guest. I am an actor, producer, creator, writer, uh, just creative all around. Wow. Okay, so you know the first question literally has to be, how in the world do you wear all of those hats? Um, I mean, so the word that I've been really following with is multi-hyphenate. Have you heard that before? Yes. Multi-hyphenate. So I'm really like jiving with that word recently because um, those are so many hats. And I think that nowadays, so many of us are multi-hyphenate. So I think that... Um, I think we just, we have to, we have to be more than just one thing. Is that, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. yeah, no, I'm sorry, I was I playing. She was coming. I was like, well, well no, no, where are you? <laughs> she, she's actually on her way coming and like, she was trying, trying to do something and I was like, don't you do it. Don't you do it, it's gonna make noise in the background. Don't you do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so back to your question and how I wear those hats. I don't know, I mean, I guess I just do it. That's it. We just do. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, sometimes I was I was gonna hope you, you were gonna say stylishly or something. I wear all those hats stylishly. Oh right. well, <laughs> you do. Wait, right? Have a couple. Wait, let's see if I can get this. These just happen to be on my on my wall. See, there you go, and you wear it stylishly. I <laughs> oh ooh, did you go to the Kentucky Derby? <laughs> These were um, props when my husband and I got married that we were playing around with. Oh, okay, because I was, I love those hats. Those are great hats. And so you do wear them stylishly. <laughs> so what were you first? Were you a writer, an actress, or a producer? I was an actress first. I started uh, down the acting journey. I went to school in Detroit. I um, went to NYU for a, a stint. I went to New York first to be an actress. And then while becoming an actress, got a job in... Uh, producing theater or in development in theater. And so um, what happened with that was that I um, started, I, I got to know a lot of writers and I couldn't get on stage as an actress. And so I produced my very first play. Hello! <laughs> I was like, she's gonna go on because she's in the middle of talking about her without, you know, noticing that I'm here. That's <laughs> So delivery made, y'all. Delivery made. <laughs> Just just made. I hope, oh, I hope it's the most beautiful desk. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, this is gonna, it's gonna you help. Got it. Trust me. It is. It is a lot. All right, let's get back to talking about yes, you. Yes, and how you, you met a lot of writers as you were on your yes, acting journey. Exactly, and I couldn't get on stage, and so I actually asked them to write me a play that I could star in. And so um, what, what happened was he, um, this playwright asked a few of his friends to contribute as well. And so they did a really fun thing where they passed it around and they wrote a play for me and a friend of mine to star in. And we donated, we asked them to make it about AIDS because we were gonna donate all of our proceeds to the Youth AIDS Foundation. And so it was a comedy about AIDS that we produced, the first thing I ever produced. Um, and those writers who I had commissioned to write this um, for me have since made, one of them as a Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, three of them have television shows that are currently on air and winning 
all kinds of awards. And so it just goes to show that like, you just need to look around you, collaborate with people, create things. And um, one of the things I learned from that was just building a network and growing with people because all of, I watched all of their journeys um, as they became more and more successful. And I was like, yeah, you know? So. Absolutely. I mean, it does. It makes you feel so great that the people that you collaborate on, go, uh, collaborate with, go on to yeah. do something so fabulous. You're just like, yes, you deserve this so yes. much. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. That's I thought you should be. be. And they were like, what? And I'm like, the whole time. I just knew this was going to happen the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm the narcissist of the group, just in case Jay didn't tell you. So I have to ask oh. pertaining to me. Okay. <laughs> oh my. No, I just want to know. So when are we collaborating again? Oh yeah. Um well I had it in the schedule for uh April of next year. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we can move it up depending on COVID, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on COVID. Oh, I like I like how she said that. I love too. it. See, this is how you know she's an actress right there. Right yep. there. She just went with it. She was like, someone threw some improv. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good at my job. So how do you change your, your mindset for each each role? Or do you change your mindset for each role? So I immediately think you're talking about acting for mindset, but then what I went to was how do I change my mindset for all the different hats that I wear as a actor, producer, writer, director. So is that what you're asking? Kind yeah, exactly. of? Exactly. I love an answer to both. How do you change your mind as an actor and how do you change your mind when you deal with like your life, your positions in life? Um, as an actress, geez, um, as an actress, you, oh, that's like a whole thing, but you, um, you put yourself in it. I don't, you put yourself in it. You find something that relates to you and you just come from a place of authenticity. Um, whether or not you can relate, like if it's a murderer or something, you just find something that relates to you. Um, for the other stuff, that was, that was a journey, I would say, because when you're writing, producing, um, sometimes directing and acting in your own stuff, um, you have to learn how to turn off parts of you so that you can edit scenes that don't mean anything uh, in the end, or they don't, you know, they aren't the best for the project. Um, and I think I, what I found in the journey um, was that when I was producing this play, I didn't even realize I was producing. I was just doing it. I was just doing, and I have always been a doer, a, an action, person. And so I just follow the steps and lo and behold, that's called producing. And so for me, I sort of fell into something that I was already kind of inherently good at um, in terms of organizing and making things happen and just finding out how to make things happen if I didn't know how to. And so when I have a producer brain on, I'm in like go, go, go mode and um, let's figure this out and that sort of thing. When I'm in acting brain, I sort of want to be like alone so I can get in my space and uh, that sort of thing. Um, but it, that's hard. That's hard to be both because people want to come at you and ask you lots of things and you're in the middle of maybe getting ready to do a scene where you're going to cry or something very serious and you have to zone out. So um, yeah, it's compartmentalizing, which as a producer, you sort of learn to do with other things. So I'm like learning how to do it still as I make more stuff. So what projects were you working on before the uh, world flowed? Oh my gosh. Um, I have a series that I uh, have, it's very near and dear to my heart. So this is something that I was just talking about this today because we're hoping to shoot in a month, we hope. Um, so that series is called Intersection. It is, it is, sorry, I don't even know where to start because there's so much. So I wanted to create a show regarding, uh, gentrification and some of the experiences that I have experienced as a gentrifier and not knowing that I was a part of something much bigger than myself. Um, so I created a writer's room here in Atlanta. I'm Atlanta based. And because I didn't want to tell a story just that is like my point of view and only me, I, I really wanted this to be an ensemble piece that showed 
you know, I live in Atlanta, which is a very um, black and white town. Like I moved into a historically black neighborhood. And um, to me, that was just a story ready to be told in so many different ways. We were gonna shoot in March. We had six episodes written that we were gonna shoot. And um, my writer's room consists of five women, uh, two black women and three white women. And that in itself was a schooling because you know, you're know, you coming at it at, at, from all these different angles and then we're writing about it. And um, then we wanna put that up on the screen, but then coronavirus and then Black Lives Matter. I mean, there's been Black Lives Matter, but this this movement has been so much, I think it was like impacted more because people were at home uh, because of coronavirus. And so I feel like it had this ability to really hit people in a, in a different way. And so we, as a, as a writer's room, went back to the writer's room. We said, okay, our show, which was about this initially, now has to adjust to where the world is now because we're coming at things a little differently now. People are, you know, reading more books and people are, things aren't as subtle as we had written them before. They are now, boom, right here. And so we are, um, we're in the rewrite phase and we hope to, I hope to be in pre-production with, the new scripts in a couple weeks, which means hopefully in a month. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, that's worth doing a dance. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't, I'm going to be annoying and ask questions. So have you already sold it? Or are you going to pitch it to someone? Or is this just going to be a web series? What are we doing with, with the uh, intersection? No, no, I love that. So, um, so originally, the original plan with the show was uh, we had written a pilot and we had done a deck and we had uh, pitched it to a couple different places and it wasn't it wasn't getting any traction and I liken this to um, I liken this to my life which is that whenever I'm in motion whenever I'm creating things happen but for me the pilot and the lookbook do you know how many pilots and lookbooks goes go into the ether a lot and for me whenever I make something doors open for me. And so I decided after the pilot and the sizzle, we made a sizzle too, we, which was actually getting good traction. Um, and we said, you, I said, you know what, I'm just, I want to make this. I want to just make something. Um, so that's when we found out that there's an Emmy, um, you can get an Emmy now for short form content. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, that seems like an amazing goal to strive for. And so we used that as a template that was our deadline because artists thrive with deadlines. They surely do. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the closer the deadline, the better. Yeah. Because right. you're gonna get it done. Yeah. You're gonna get it done. You're so right because ours was in May and we were gonna shoot in March and we were like, we gotta go. And now the, the deadline is next year. And so we're kind of like, oh, okay, well, which is fine, but whatever. That was the original deadline was this Emmy consideration. Um, now, now we, you know, we're coming at it in a different way, but yes, we're going to make a um, web series that for us is sort of a proof of concept of what it could be as a television show. Um, but I'm not gonna live and die by whether or not it gets picked up to a television show. I think we're doing some amazing content. And if, for me, it will be a success um, when I get to make my second season. That, that, will, that will feel like we're getting somewhere because we have so much more that we have to explore. And I'm like, cool, you know, give it, give it to me, like however we do it. Okay, so I have like two questions, but first question is what are the top three pieces of advice that you would give anyone that's just trying to be creative, especially in this time? So I said it already, but I, I say it again because I say it a lot, is uh, do. Always, if you're a creator, if you're an artist, do. If you're a writer, write. If you're a, um, you know, if you're a screenwriter, I just read something today that, that said like, if you're a screenwriter and you're sick of writing 
pl uh, plays, sorry, not plays, uh, films, then write a poem, write something that um, just fuels yourself as, as that. But when I was also a manager for a little while when I was in Los Angeles, and one of those, the things that I learned the most from being a manager and being behind a desk was our favorite clients were the ones who were always giving us something to talk about, whether that was acting and you were doing a scene or you were, uh, you know, doing a YouTube thing or whatever, or if you were a writer and you were like, Hey, here's some log lines, which one do you like? And I'll give you a treatment next week. And so for me, that was the biggest lesson in my career was just like, if you're a creator, create. Two more. Let's see. Um, I, I feel like time. I feel like that that was enough. Like that was that was a lot. And, and I, honestly, we absolutely love that. That is um, that was almost our secondary motto. Yeah. <laughs> do the After the wisdom one, it's pretty much. <laughs> I love your wisdom one. I do <laughs> love your wisdom one, though. Thank, well, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Where can people find out more about you and the web series that is coming up that you're probably gonna shoot in in like August, hopefully. Yeah, man. Give me good. Um, I'm at Meg Mesmer on Instagram. Um, my website is also Meg Mesmer. Um, I, I have during quarantine, I went through a depression when we couldn't shoot our show. Um, so I didn't want to do anything but plant and cook and bake and blah, blah, blah. And so when I came out of that sort of depression, I decided that I wanted to help creatives a little bit. And my website, I focused a little more on writing some blogs and sort of helping creatives that are in a little bit of a, a rut that, that need like guidance. Um, because I've been in so many facets of the industry, that felt like a, a way that I could give my heart without, you know, um, also give my heart a piece of me. So you can find me there on my website, Meg Mesmer, uh, Instagram Meg Mesmer. And my show is Instagram at gentrification the show, even though it's called Intersection. Fabulous. Thank you so much for coming on today. Really appreciate it. Jade, would you like to wrap Absolutely. this up? Absolutely. You can find out everything your ladies are doing at www.andrewethought.com while you're there. So I'm going to have two while you're there today, y'all. While you're there, go on the homepage. Go down and see the Ladies' Tale podcast, y'all. It is so cool. We have a table read of one of our, our script books yeah. that we did, right? Our like pilot We like to call it the closest we will ever get to a TV, TV show. show. So go yeah. ahead and check that <laughs> out. And then, and then check out some of the interviews after that we did with the artists because, and the actors because they literally did volunteer to do this for us. And then they volunteered so much that they were like, you have to do an episode too because we have to know you. Let's just hang. We have to know what happened. So, so we're going to check out that. That's going to be on August 15th and it should be up like in a reasonable about a week later so please go check out the ladies tale podcast but also while you're at our website go on up to the ladies tab go to down to the middle and see the charities that we probably support and maybe you can support them too yes we know times are hard so money might not be a thing maybe you have some clothes or something you want to donate to a charity check and see what they're doing or number three which costs nothing go to the website go to the contact us form and just say thank you for doing this wonderful work because we all need encouragement sometimes sometimes we're sitting around like why am i doing this and someone says Hey, I see you. You're like, oh, this, I mean, I'm not doing it for that. But yeah, somebody appreciate it. Let me go ahead and do some more good things in this world. So thank you in advance for that. And just remember, wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love you guys. From Will Nardo. And Jade. Bye-bye.